‫ישנם הרבה אנשים, אני נותן להם להיכנס. Hi all, and welcome to Provision ISR seminar. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about SHOB, the SHOB uh, software for Vision ISR, which is basically a SIM software to control your security elements. Uh, what we're going to see today is only one module of the entire SHOB system. Uh, by the way, SHOB, for those of you that might ask, what is the meaning of the word SHOB? So SHOB is a, is a Hebrew meaning. It's basically uh, control and uh, maintaining, basically, uh, which is basically a PSIM software. Uh, during 2021, we're going to introduce more modules to the SHOB software. At the moment, we introduce only the parking management solution module. However, very soon, we are going to introduce the access control uh, module that integrate with the CCTV cameras as well. Later on, we're going to introduce the alarm module, be able to pop up videos and open doors every time an alarm system goes on and so on and so on. So basically a software to control all your security elements. What we're going to see today is basically the parking management solution, which is one module of the shop system. And this seminar is being recorded. So later on, you will be able to get the recordings of the webinar of the seminar and show it to some, some other people. Uh, it's going to be published in our website. David is going to show later on uh, at the end of the seminar how to access this seminar recording and other seminar recordings such as this that we are doing monthly. Uh, we're going to leave the microphone closed for now. Our chat box is open for questions. We're going to leave also room at the end of this seminar. It's going to take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And we're going to leave room for questions open microphones and ask question or you can just write your question at the chat box now we'll be asking uh, on behalf of you david who is here with me will conduct this seminar david go ahead thank you very much enjoy thank you very much amnon so yes like uh, amnon said we're going to introduce to you today the shop and show you how to how to manage it how to operate it how to activate it and everything um, First, let's talk about uh, what is the shop and what is this good for. So the shop is a software to manage parking lots and it is good for uh, or whoever has a parking lot and wants to manage it, uh, for example, private, private, uh, private parkings or uh, villas or private houses, uh, residential housing, uh, even the uh, uh, large towers of uh, of the housing is also good for for that uh, for that purpose. Uh, companies, different companies that share a parking lot, this is also for them. So the shop really gives um, a a big variety of uh, solutions for uh, many different kinds of uh, of demands. So first, let's uh, go through the different models. Uh, that we all can see here. As you can see, the, the shop is a web-based software. Okay, so um, you can see that I access the shop using a, an internal a, a address. Of course, first of all, we install it on our computer, then we can access it and manage the whole thing from the network. So let's start. Our first module is the LPR Quick Setup. We can see here in small words that it says create a working system using just five simple steps. This is actually what we are going to start with uh, in a second after we finish go through them. Uh, it contains everything that, that we already have on the different other modules. Okay, uh, It will uh, basically give us the ability to operate a parking lot in about 30, 40 seconds. Okay, This is the amount of time it takes to create this uh, using the LPR quick step setup. The next module is the monitoring and, and control. After we have a, a working system, after we have a, our LPR setup and vehicles that are uh, arriving and the camera captures license plates, this is where we will enter in order to, to see it. Okay, we want to see all of the events that, uh, that our camera captured, then this is where we're gonna go. This is also where we can see the amount of spaces left in our parking lot, but of course we're gonna get to there. 
authorized cars. This is where we will add our vehicles. After all, we want to uh, after all we want to allow different vehicles uh, into our uh, perimeter, into our parking lot. This is where we do it. LPR cameras, of course, the the core of the system is the LPR. Without it, it is not possible. This is where we add the camera itself. Parking group. Parking group is a, a, is a pretty simple to explain. Uh, we have the parking lot and we have company, a company that uh, uh, that is inside the parking lot. Cars that are arriving to the parking lot will access uh, because uh, they are a part of this company. Now, the parking group is a part of the company itself. When we add a car, we add it to the parking group. Okay, parking group is like an authorized uh, group that will allow this group of vehicles to enter to the parking lots that we will choose. Okay, it's like an authorization group. Uh, parking spaces, this is where we will authorize, we'll assign uh, parking spaces to the different companies. For example, we have one parking lot, but three different companies inside. We want to give to company A 20 parking spots and to the company B 30 and company C, we want to give them only 10 parking spaces. This is where we do it. Visitors in order to uh, invite visitor, which is not a part of our uh, everyday authorized car, but we want to allow it to enter uh, in a period of time. It can be a day, two days, a uh, few hours, then it will give this uh, car a window to enter. Block list, if you want to block uh, vehicles from entering, and the licenses, which uh, uh, this is how to activate the full system. So starting with the LPR quick setup, let's see what we have here. First of all, we have the parking lot. Okay, this is where we give our parking lot a name. Let's keep it on parking lot one. We here, um, a, here we determine the amount of uh, parking spaces to that parking lot. Okay, so a parking lot has a, a limited amount of parkings. Of course, it, it depends on the physical size that, uh, of this uh, parking lot. So in this case, let's keep it 10. This parking lot has a capacity for 10 vehicles. Company, a parking lot uh, can host one company, two company, three, as much as you want companies. Um, so here also we can add the name of the company. We'll call it company one to make it convenient and continue. LPR cameras, uh, we've already added a, a few vehicle, a few uh, LPR cameras. But for the, for the demonstration, I will just add uh, one camera just to show you how to do it. Of course, what I did was just to press the add LPR camera to parking lot one to the parking lot. And let's quickly give the details. As you can see, I fill in the name of the camera. The IP address of the camera, you can add it also via domain. Okay, it doesn't have to be with the IP address. It can be local or remote. Uh, the HTTP port you need to provide, also the RTSP for the uh, video. There are a few more ports, but they are being taken automatically by the shop. Okay, the shop can uh, 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 communicate with the camera in order to get the other details. And of course, let's put the password of the camera. And we need to determine if this camera is in the entrance to the parking lot or in the exit of the parking lot. Wait a second, and we have here that uh, the camera is uh, online. We can make sure that those cameras are online. You can see live video for this camera and live video from this camera as well. Okay, our camera, cameras are online. Uh, next, parking spaces. So we can assign a parking space. Let me do it from the beginning. So we have a clear, clean sheet. A parking space. So every company, of course, as, as I said, every company can have, have a, a couple of uh, parking spaces. So let's see how to assign parking space to the company. We press assign parking space. Okay, we have here company one, because this is the only company we have at the moment. Uh, the number of spaces to assign to this company, I will give it only five. Uh, remember that the, uh, remember that the, one second. Okay. Remember that the parking lot itself, the big parking lot cons cons contains 10 parking spaces. So five of them will go to company number one. The names are uh, given automatically. Okay, just like this, A1, A2 until A5. 
and we move into the next step. Uh, authorized cars. Now this is where we are going to add a vehicle to our system, into our parking group. As we remember, the parking group is the um, authorization group, so uh, the, the cars will be added to that, to the parking group. Add authorized cars, let's add a vehicle for an example. All you have to provide when you add a parking lot, uh, when you add a vehicle, is the license plate number. You can add up to five different license plates for one car. It means that one uh, employee, or uh, you think about the topology, is um, uh, you can add up to five different uh, vehicles. First name, you give a name, and the last name. Actually, everything that was uh, painted red was a must. Of course, you have the last name you can provide, user ID, the email address, phone number, address, and comment. After we save the changes, we can see here that we have three different Vs, a V for each camera. Okay, we have the Peacock entrance, parking LPR and LPR camera. Those three are three uh, LPR cameras that are uh, connected to our system and the, the license plate that they've just added was synchronized into all of those cameras. So it means that uh, when this vehicle will be captured by uh, any of the cameras, uh, it means that the gate will open. That's it. Now we're finished with the uh, with the quick setup. At the moment we have already, already at the moment we have a, a working system. Okay, we can we can start to operate start start from this moment. Uh, I will also step. add. Sorry, David. I will also add just one technical thing. If we are talking about a standalone LPR camera. Uh, let's say a private house with, uh, with, uh, with a gate or a building apartment with a gate or a small company with one gate and a small parking. Basically, at this point, all the information was also heard, poured into the camera. Provision ISR LPR camera will come with a built-in SD card. So you can basically close the software right now and the LPR camera will, will act as a standalone unit opening and closing the gate for the authorized car that you already input in the quick setup for the for the LPR camera that you set up in the LPR in the quick setup process. So at this point, you can actually close the software, go home, the LPR camera will do the job by himself. Now what David is gonna show us is more advanced feature and for, for more manageable parking lots that need to be online managed by someone. Go ahead, David. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, first thing is the monitoring and control. Monitoring and control, this is where we will see the results from our cameras. All of our different cameras, they are in the field, they're capturing license plates. This is where we see the actual footages, okay? Uh, so, every line that we can see in this window resembles Betsem, actually the a capturing made by the camera. So let's see what we have here. We have the, the details, the time and the date when that the license plate was captured. What is the camera? The camera name that captured the plate. We can see different cameras here. We can see the direction, if the camera is in the in entrance or an exit to the parking lot. The event type, this case, in this case, we can see unauthorized cars. And here we have two vehicles that are authorized. They are in the database. We can see the license plate, okay? Uh, a simple press on the license plate will take us to quickly add a, a vehicle into our uh, system. So we don't have to go to the different menus and start to search for uh, how to add a vehicle. You just uh, press it from here, it's a shortcut. If you will press the image, we have a cutout image of the, of the license plate captured. If you will press it, we get two snapshots. One of them is the cutout snapshot right here that show us the uh, license plate itself. Next to it, we can find the characters that got extracted from, from the image, made from a, a realistic to a virtual character. We can see that this is the exact same numbers. Um, and we have, of course, the entire frame, okay? This is actually a good example to show you the, uh, uh, the uh, performance of the camera, that half of the, in this case, half the, of the image is hidden by a, by a truck, 
but still the camera managed to capture the vehicle while in movement uh, with half a frame available. Okay, um, on the top, we can see four buttons. Okay, the first one will allow us to filter the data by dates. So remember that when our computer is running and the software is running all the time and the cameras are keep on capturing the license plates, data is being gathered throughout the days and weeks and months. So here we can determine what is the, from when until when we are searching records. Okay, if you search records for a period of four months, four months ago, then you will just have to go here and start to take the schedule back to the months that you want, start time and end time. Next is the filter, adding a filter. Now we have here a lot of uh, results, as you can see about 50, we have three pages, it's about 150 different plates for right now, it's uh, only working for, for a day or so. Um, what if we search for uh, a plate, a license plate? Then all you have to do is to press the add filter and here you can just click the license plate, the number that you want, and it will be automatically get a, a filtration according to the numbers that you have chosen. For example, I wrote six, five, and I already have only one, two, three, four, five, six results. All of them will have the sequence of six, five in between. So of course, it, it, if you search for four or five for the entire, entire plate number, then you will get only the plate that you want. Of course, when you have authorized vehicles, you probably have a driver name and the company name, then you have much more uh, abilities to filter. Okay, you can filter by name or company name. Uh, next is the selecting headers. We have here a lot of information. Okay, company name, driver name, pictures, everything is visible, but it's a lot of information. Some of us may find the, uh, the interface a little bit packed. So maybe we want to, you know, uh, take it down a notch. So of course you can play with all of the things you can see on the screen and you can make the look to fit your needs. Next is the refresh button. It will just refresh an internal uh, service uh, on, the, on, the, on the computer itself to allow the, the system to refresh. If this happens in case that the camera is suddenly offline or something, then here you can just refresh the entire system. Of course, it doesn't mean that any data will be lost. Real-time events. Uh, this now is not rush hour, so we don't see many different plates uh, captured all, uh, all the time. But, but whenever we have a new capture, a new vehicle that pass, then we will see a green uh, row and the other rows will be drawn down. So if we want to stop it because we are in the middle of something or we are searching for something, we can just stop the real-time events. No more for uh, new events that will pop up. Uh, but here in the zero, we will, be, we will see how many events uh, took place in the background while we were in the state of real-time events, of stopping the real-time events. Um, here to the right, we have the action button. Action button is really simple. We have three options. One of them is the live video. You can see the live video from the camera uh, associated right now. For example, this is camera, uh, uh, camera number one. And in this case, we have a camera from a different angle. Okay, both of them of the same uh, parking lot. We have the second option, which is open gate. Remember the number 11606101. Okay, now we had a new one. Never mind this one, the 101 in the end. We're gonna press open gate and the gate is open. We are uh, theoretically, right? Yes, but we are opening. Actually what we're doing right now is to allow the, ca the car to enter to our parking lot manually. Not always the car will be on the authorized list. Sometimes we want to add, uh, to allow a car in uh, for some reason. Then of course this option available. How can we see it and monitor and control it? right in the overview and control, but we are going to see it in a second. The last button, okay, the last button is the export row as an XLS. This, the entire row that we are uh, marking will be exported in, a, in an Excel file, including all of the information you see here, including also the picture of the vehicle, of the plate. So how can we manage the vehicle that we just uh, allowed to enter to our parking lot manually? How can we manage it? We're gonna go to the overview and control. We can see here, parking lot. This is our parking lot, parking lot one, company, company one. And we can see that we have a total parking of five, 
how many occupied parkings? One. It is occupied by the vehicle that we just entered. Okay, 101 in the end with all of the data of that vehicle. Uh, so of course we still manage it. And when we want to remove that vehicle because, because he has left, he left uh, the parking lot, just mark it. I just marked it and do it. I did it really quick, but and we press here, the remove from parking and the vehicle is gone. Okay, I think that we've covered, yes, we covered the overview and control. Moving on to the next, uh, to the next block. Our next block, block is the authorized cars. In the authorized cars, we have a couple of uh, important uh, subjects. First is the company. So remember we have, we can have one company, two or 10 that are hosted in the same parking lot. Uh, this is where here we can uh, we can first add a vehicle, vehicle to our parking group. How do we do it? We're gonna add an authorized car, give uh, the plate and the name, provide the information, press okay, we already did that, no need to do it again. Uh, how can we add a vehicle to company number two? So this is where the parking group is uh, uh, should be understand. When I go to the company two, Okay, I can see that I don't have any parking group. Okay, parking group, there is no any. So it means that I need to add a new parking group that will be associated to company two. Every company has its own parking groups. Okay, the logic behind it is that usually there are companies that have access to many different parking lots. Okay, can, a company can have multiple parking lots. Uh, and this company might want to allow only to the technical department to enter to two of our parking lots. So it will create a parking group for the technical department. And this parking group will only be allowed into those parking lots, those two parking lots. So what will we do? Well, we, what will we do next? We're going to go to add, edit a parking group and add a parking group to company number two. So what we're going to do is to give it a name, parking group two, uh, choose the parking lot where this uh, parking group will be associated. So parking lot one and save changes. Okay, we have a new parking group. Let's go back, let's refresh. And now when I go to company two, I have parking group two. This is something I did not had before. And now I can add a vehicle. Okay, so this is how you can add a vehicle to different departments uh, for the same company. Next, we have here the ad company. No need to talk much about it. This is where we add a company. Okay, so we have we can have a parking lot. This is stage number one, then a company. Let's create another company just for fun, company three. Save changes. Now we have another company, which of course we don't have a parking group. So here, this is where the story just uh, uh, re uh, repeats itself. Okay, next we can see here two vehicles that are already uh, comp inside company one, inside parking group one. We have two vehicles. We want to know if those vehicles are synchronized into the camera or not synchronized. Maybe we added those vehicles when the camera was offline. So uh, here we can see the status and authorize a uh, license plate. If we will press the advanced button, we can see the license plate status. We can get the status immediately for those two people that we have chosen. We can see that they are synchronized into parking LPR camera and to LPR camera one, uh, but not into Peacock entrance. Let's try to authorize it. Uh, still no. Okay. Need to probably assign some uh, vehicles. Okay, never mind. So we have these two vehicles uh, synchronized into these uh, uh, cameras. If you want to force a uh, synchronize, we can just press authorize all and the, uh, those uh, vehicles will be, uh, will be synchronized into the cameras uh, automatically. Also, we have a button for that here in the, in, the, in the bottom, in the bottom right, authorized parking lots. We can choose each uh, vehicle individually and synchronize it to the camera. Okay. Next, here, next is the LPR cameras. Uh, this is where we will add 
the camera, okay? Uh, of course, if you want to add a camera, it will be done from here. This is the same menu that we saw before. If you want to delete an LPR camera, we can just go to market and press delete LPR camera. Um, we have here the information regarding to that camera, we have the name, the printed type of it, uh, IP, the IP of the camera, port, direction, entrance or exit. We can see the status, whether it is online or offline. We can open the gate from here, watch live video. When I say open the gate, we can open the gate manually. Uh, and replace camera. Replace camera is a very uh, important button because actually it allows us uh, freedom. If for, for some reason we, we, uh, we switch the camera with another camera, uh, all we have to do in order to provide the, the details for the new camera is the, this button, replace camera. Once the new camera is connected and running into the system, into the shop system, we press replace camera and the vehicles should be synchronized into that camera, will be synchronized automatically, you don't have to do anything. Okay, I think that we are here with the LPR camera. A parking group. So parking group, as I mentioned before, just gonna repeat it. We have a, a the parking group is a part of the company, it is the authorization group. Uh, once a vehicle is a part of the parking group, it will be able to enter to the parking lots that are associated with this parking group. Um, a few options here. Let's go to company number three and at the parking group, just uh, need to give it a name, just like before, choose the parking lot itself. And this is it, we have a parking group. Okay, this is where we create a parking group. And if you want to add vehicles to the parking group, we're just gonna go to the authorized vehicles where we, where we were before. Okay, parking group. I think that this is it for the parking group. Of course, we have the delete. I won't repeat a, a really basic buttons because uh, everybody knows those. Delete, add, uh, parking spaces. So for our parking lot, which is one, one parking lot with the 10 uh, places. Uh, we have uh, already, I think, uh, we have a, a co company number one, okay? Uh, now, we, all, we have already two more companies, but as you know, as you see, they don't show here. They don't show, we see parking lot one, company, we have only company one. Why is that very logical? We need to assign a parking space to the company that we want. So we have here company two and company three, okay? We're just gonna uh, choose company two. We have five parking spots left, okay? Because the parking lot itself is 10. Company one takes five. Company two has only five left. So we're gonna uh, press the letter, the uh, number five. The name, of course, you can change the name. You can give it any name you want. And then the numbers will, uh, will jump accordingly. So save changes, save changes. Now, instead of company one, we have also company two. So company two, we have here a couple of more uh, uh, parkings. Now, just for the example, I will go to company two. I will assign another parking space, go to company three. And we can see here already that it says amount of parking spaces, it means that no matter what I'm going to do, I can't add any more parking spaces because it is physically impossible. We said in the beginning that the parking lot only has 10 parking spots, we cannot add any more. So parking company three, eh, really too bad for it. Okay, of course, if you want to remove some parking spots, eh, parking spots, you can do it from here. Okay, if I delete parking spaces, then park company two has only three and we can add for company three, an extra, an extra two parking spaces. Uh, one. Need to refresh. Okay, never mind. We can do it later. Okay, so um, one second, two good, three not good. Okay, save changes. Now we have a we have company one, company two, and company three. All of them has. Uh, some parking spaces. Visitors. So in many cases, we would uh, want to, to invite guests, 
okay, if they are our customers, uh, VIP clients, uh, family members, uh, 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 meetings, then of course we want to add, a, we want to allow someone to enter to our facility, but it's not permanent. We don't want to, to, to allow it to enter all the time. So of course we're gonna go to the visitors and we will choose the period of time when this uh, vehicle is invited, okay? So of course, just like before, we keep everything similar. Everything is the same for it uh, to be uh, very simple to use. So let's say that the company two, somebody from company two wants to invite someone. Then what we're going to do is to choose the parking, okay? The parking lot where he is going to be invited to and add visitor to company two. So let's add a, a plate number, for example, okay? A visit time, we can see here the visit time. So we choose the from and the to time. So from when until when this vehicle will be allowed to enter. So we can see here, this is March 20, 2021, 30 of March. Let's say that this vehicle will be allowed to enter from 4.30 until I press the two button until the 31, until tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow at noon, let's say noon and set. So this is our valid time that this vehicle will be allowed to enter, this vehicle right here. We need to provide a name. So let's provide a, a name. I don't know, I want to say Google, Never mind. And a last name also. Uh, of course, you can also provide different uh, details like su such as a person ID, email if you want to have a, a clues about to who was in your parking lot in the past. And of course, just fill in the information, email and phone number and everything. Save data, close, and we are good. We are good. We have here uh, our, new, our new vehicle. We can see that this vehicle is authorized. Okay, if I see the authorized parkings, we can see that it has three uh, green Vs. It means that it has been synchronized to all of the cameras. And it happens because that the vehicle uh, it happens because the vehicle is uh, within the time, okay? It is within the time that it will be allowed to enter to our parking lot. Now, unlike the car, the other car in the middle here, David David, it is available from the 21st of February, okay? Until the 23rd of February, it means that its time is long gone. So authorized parking, X is, you can see X, but the vehicle that we have added in the visitors is uh, allowed to enter. It means that it is synchronized to the camera. Uh, what we did now was to show you how to in how to invite someone that we want to, to come over to our parking lot. Of course, that the opposite can also happen. If you want to block somebody from entering, then of course, we're going to go into the block list. We're going to provide the information to the company, okay, to the company needed, company, company one, for example, uh, just add a car to the vehicle, to the to this company, exactly using the same method we just did before. You can choose the vehicle, the parking lot that uh, this vehicle is going to be banned from and save the changes. You save the changes, all of the cameras are synchronized. They will not allow the vehicle that we just added to enter. Okay, there it's in the block list. Uh, the license part is the part that uh, this is actually where we can see the uh, the magnitude of the, sh the the software that it's going to have in the near future. It's going to support doors and access controls, and uh, of course cameras, LPRs, tags, zones, fire detectors, many different things. Um, and also, this is the place where we will add the. Uh, where we will uh, open the, the software, where we implement this the, the license. Next, uh, this is something that Amnon said before um, regarding to the where all of our recordings are uh, located in our website. And I want to show you it really, really quick. We have a new section that uh, will maintain, will hold all of the webinars that we are doing. We are doing two webinars a month in different subjects. All of them can be found here in the Provision ISR site. Knowledge sharing, live webinars. Under live webinars, we're going to have, have of course, the upcoming events, which we, you 
can all register now. Uh, you can see the past events. Okay, you can watch them again simply by pressing the watch again button. We can see the subject, OSIA VMS in this case, or Provision Camp to Web. Of course, that after today, we're going to have a third one, uh, which will be the shop system. Uh, okay, so this was the end for a-, a Just Before for, uh, you close it, stay in the website, please. <clears throat> and go to, there's also one more thing I would like to show you. Under, uh, if you want to know more information about the shop, uh, specifically about what David just showed today, if you go to software and shop, you can have more or less all the information that they gave me, David gave today. The main feature of the shop system for the parking management solution. What is the main features of the quick setup and the LPR cameras and how to, and about visitors and uh, and everything you need to know including the ability of course to download some of the some of the information regarding the shop interface whether it's the camera leaflet or uh, about about the lpr solution in general and so on and i would like to talk just two minutes regarding commercial parts first of all david thank you very much and we're going to leave room for questions and there are a few and i'm going to ask on behalf of you uh, commercially, um, the software is free of charge to be downloaded from our website. It exists in our website and you can download uh, the shop software to manage your parking lot uh, free of charge for one camera, basically. So if it's a private house or a private building or building apartment with one gate and one camera or a small uh, parking lot of one company that has their own parking lot and they need one camera, then naturally you will buy provisionized our LPR camera, hopefully, and you will manage the parking lot and the guests and the invites through this uh, free of charge software. And once you do so, like I said in the beginning, and you set it up for the first time, the provisionized our LPR camera come with a built-in SD card. And once you did all the setup, you can actually uh, have all the information poured into the camera, into the SD card of the camera, and the camera will be standalone from that point on. And she will manage the entrance and the exits. Every time you want to see what happened, you can just open the software again and retrieve all the information from the SD card by a click of a button and see all the history of all the cars that came in with the pictures and everything that, which was stored on the camera SD card. So the, com the license is come free of charge for one camera for one channel, whether it's an inside in, in incoming cars or in and out uh, camera. Uh, second and third and so on are uh, license-based uh, fees. Uh, you may contact your local distributors to hear more about the costs and you will find that they are very attractive. Uh, regarding more features and some of you are asking some of the future features that we are developing. Um, it's important to understand that Provision SR is very fast and developing features into the parking management solution. So every time there is a project that is going on right now and you need to know if we can accommodate any kind of request from the customer, write us an email and uh, we'll be happy to answer it quite fast. <clears throat> Some of the features that we are working on right now, uh, people ask me about authorities and uh, who can do what. At the moment there is only, uh, David correct me here if I'm wrong, the moment there is basically only one user to the software that can do everything and in about two weeks time we come up with a new version of uh, uh, three levels of users to one of them is the only viewer the other one is admin and three levels of authorities to handle the parking management and uh, some of the other feature we are working on right now is relate to have more control on who is going out from the parking lot. And again, most of the feature we develop is from project we did in the last three, four months and collecting requests. Uh, so the ability to, con to control who is going out from the parking lot. So yes, we are allowing people to go in. Um, and uh, once we enter the guest, for example, or uh, an authorized car to the list of authorized cars, so naturally it can also go out. Uh, not necessarily. You have the ability as a user to control who is going out. 
you can define, yes, these authorized cars can go in and go out, or you can define that the specific uh, license plate can go in, but it needs permission to go out. Could be a truck delivery or many other reasons. Uh, we had some projects around the world that require that feature, so we developed it. And another feature we are working on is everything you saw in the in the invite in the invite guest uh, screen that you are allowed or recommended to put email address and phone number. Reason is is we are working on a model for uh, SMS messages and automatic email messages. So the guest that you invited will get an automated an automated message by SMS and by email uh, of the details of the time he was supposed is supposed to come to your uh, premises. And as a user or the admin of the software, you will get a message as well when the the guest arrived to the gate. Uh, this is some of the features we are working on, and there are more to come. Uh, and now is the time for questions. First, feel free to open. It's quite a small uh, seminar today, so feel free to open your mic if you have a question, or write it in the chat box. I'll, I'll ask on behalf of you. Uh, some of it I already answered. Uh, one that just came in. Uh, Shop is compatible only with provisional RLPR camera, or it can take images from an on with camera. Uh, David? It can, it can take... Okay, it can take uh, images from on with camera. At the moment, we have a work, uh, working uh, HIG Vision LPR. Um, and I can tell you that it is working. Uh, of course, we'll keep on improving. The, the recommendation would be to take a ProVision ISR camera, of course. Uh, but regarding your question, yes, you can work with um, HIG Vision, I would say. About, uh, for example, Dahua, it hasn't been tested yet, so can't uh, tell you for sure. I will also mention uh, that this uh, webinar was recorded and you can find it in, uh, in the website of Provision ISR and you will get the recording as well. Um, for those of you that has to leave, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you will try uh, the software for yourself and experiment with it a little bit and see the way it uh, responds and how easy it is to use. Um, we are going to stay here for the next 10 minutes for uh, to open uh, to answer any open question. Thank you very much for joining and hope to see you next in our next seminars. David's go